Hello everyone, and one CLC here. Uh, given the coronavirus, I've been at home working a lot, and at lunchtime I've had a chance to do a little bit of chasing. So I'm doing that to a program called N3 FJP's Amateur Contact Log. I'm running version 6.6 .6 for those of you that want to follow along. If you use that application, what I'm going to do is show you how to export specific records out of there so that you can create a SOTA compatible data file and do a quick upload. That's easy from having to enter each one manually. So let's get to it. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie. Summit's on the air. Okay, this is my version of Amateur Contact Log version 6.6. .6. It lets you modify a few things in it, which is super handy for what I'm doing. So let me just take you through that really quick. They have some fields in there called Other. The first one I just use for is it a chase? Is it a soda activation or is it a contact that I made from home? Just allows me to kind of categorize the contacts that I've had. You can rename these and I've done that on a couple of them. So down here I have one called My Summit and another one called His Summit. So um, that's what I've done. That's probably the most important thing I want to show you. There, there's one other tweak that I made and that um, allows you to display, decide which ones you're going to display in this little summary page. So what I've done is I've put other in here. What that allows me to do is see which ones are chases, which one, here's a poda. Um, I've got a bunch that are soda, obviously. Most of my contacts actually in this entire log, you'll see they're all soda. Um, so I've got a few chases in here, but um, most of my uh, pre-corona was all soda. And I did all of my chasing from mountaintops. Um, given more rat today, um, that's not quite as easily done. So the other thing I do is once I've uploaded these, um, I put them into um, Logbook of the World and then I go out and get an update from Logbook of the World and it basically colors them so I can tell which ones I've done and which ones I haven't done. So these ones in black and white are actually kind of a gray panel and uh, white have not been done yet. So I need to take these and export those so that I can get them into SOTA data. So let's do that. Step number one, I'm going to highlight all of the records that I want to export because I don't want to do all of them. So these are all of the ones that I have not uploaded yet. I'm going to go to File, Export ADIF, and then Selected Records. The next page it shows up is what is the file that I want to call this? So I'm going to call it I'm going to put it in my temp directory. I'm going to call it 2020 um, 04 uh, 15 chase records. Okay. So I've done that. Pressed enter. And I'm just going to choose all the defaults here. You want to leave all this stuff as it is. I'm going to say continue. And it's done. Okay. So that part was pretty darn easy. Um, the next step is to open a little utility that was put up by another ham. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to paste the URL into the description um, for this um, for this particular tutorial here. All right. So I did a little zoom in. Hopefully you can read this. But um, it's it's done by uh, Oscar November 6, Zulu, Quebec. Um, and what he or she has done is basically allows you to base, um, cut and paste your file and put it in here and then you press a button and it creates the data for you. So let me get to do that right now. I'm going to open the file that we just created with Amateur Contact Log. I'm going to bring up an application called Notepad and then I'm going to go to my temp directory and look for anything that that looks like that. So here's my file. If you remember, it's 2020.04.15 Chase. I'm going to open that file, and here it is. This is what that file looks like. Now, to you, it probably looks like a bunch of junk. It looks like a bunch of junk to me, but 
Um, there's a method to their madness here to this data structure. I'm going to highlight. I'm just going to control A to highlight everything. And I'm going to do a control C. Now you can do an edit um, copy as well. So I've highlighted everything. It's now on the clipboard. I'm going to go to the little web page here. I'm going to do another control A. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff because I'm going to paste my file. Here we go. So my file is now in there. And I'm going to get rid of my soda summit reference because these are just purely chase records. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this little remove ADF comment field. And I'm going to submit. Let me tell you what's going to happen when I do that. It's going to basically parse this file and figure out all the information that it needs for the soda data. And because I use some funky field that it probably doesn't understand for summit reference, which is really important, obviously. What it does is it parses the file, this file that I just pasted in, for any valid SOTA summit. And if it finds it, then it'll create the file. So let's see what happens here. Aha! Uh -huh. Looks like it worked. If you get any blanks in the summit reference, um, it could be that you, A, forgot to put it in your uh, logbook, or B, that maybe it wasn't a valid, it wasn't put in correctly. Now I typically cut and paste these from the uh, from Soda Watch, so there's really no likelihood of that happening. Um, this is the version two data file. Station call sign seems to be missing. Well, it turns out that the ADI file doesn't output exactly the way this uh, developer had expected. No problem. Let me show you what we're going to do, and this is step maybe two or three, step three. I'm going to highlight this whole thing by, oops, actually i got to do this. i highlight these nine records. Um, I'm going to paste that. I'm going to copy it. So I'll right click. I'm going to say copy. Now I'm going to go back to notepad here. And I'm going to create a new file by doing a control N as in Nancy, or you can just say file new. And I'm going to paste that. And voila. There they are. But we certainly need to fix this. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. And I'm going to look for find and replace. So I'm going to replace anything with station call sign. And I'm going to give it mine. N1 CLC. Replace. I'm going to replace all. Voila. Problem solved. And now I'm going to do a file. Save as. I'm going to put it somewhere where I can remember. And it's going to be 2020 uh, Chase.csv. Comma separated values is what that stands for. And I'm just going to save that. And we're done. We're done with that file. So let's go to the final step here, which is going over to SOTA data. So let's do that next. Um, SOTA. SOTA data. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so it's hopefully easier for you to see my screen. Um, the first thing you need to do is log in because if you're not logged in, you just get kicked back in to the login. Okay, now we're logged in. I'm going to go to into the menu here. I'm going to submit logs. I'm going to upload a CSV TSV log file. So here we go. Um, it asks me for, I already know that it's a valid format. I've done this many times before. I'm going to choose a file. Uh, it's in the temp directory. So um, rather than click around, I'm going to be able to find it this way. It's sorted by latest updated. Here it is. My chase file that I misspelled, but I put just a 202 in there, but who cares? All right, let's upload this baby. And it is a valid file format. So the first thing it does is checks to make sure that these are all valid references and the, uh, the formats of your data is correct, etc. So as you can see, um, I don't have any errors. Um, if you did, it'll show up. It'll be very plain, you know, what the errors are and where they're at. Then I'm going to say submit. Choose the agree button. And successful. Done. I have 750 activator points and... Oh, over a thousand summit to summit points. And hey, I just broke a thousand uh, chase points, which means I'm officially 
a shack sloth. But you already knew that. That's it. That's all there is to it. So if you use amateur contact log and you want to um, output, it, up quickly upload all of your chase records, that's how you do it. There is a little bit of goofing around. I mean, it'd be nicer if there was a file export, a SOTA data file that I could just upload, but they don't. But because other hams have written that little utility to convert the ADI file um, into just pulling just the fields you need for SOTA, it makes it super easy. That's all there is to it. And finito, done. We've taken our records uh, where we used our logbook to lock our chases easily get those out and get them up into the soda website to get our points um, so I'm sure my wife is gonna be totally proud of me just unbelievably proud about the fact that I just broke Shaq's sloth I mean who wouldn't love that right um, how, how many wives could say that their husband is a true Shaq's sloth so I have to print out my uh, certificate and I don't know throw a little party tonight <laughs> Um, the next part, um, as a quick bonus, before we get into that, though, um, as you may have noticed in that application, if uh, there's a way to put in your uh, summit that you are at, uh, and the application will be used to log uh, either a summit to summit, or if you didn't have a summit reference in your log, then it would just, it looks like you could use it to take it directly out of any application that outputs ADI files and um, log your contacts into SOTA Watch that way. So pretty cool little uh, utility that was written uh, by that ham. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that. What I'm going to do is very quickly, as a bonus, show you how um, Amateur Contact Log makes it so you can upload that stuff to Logbook of the World. And I also um, export and put them out to QRZ. Super easy. I'll show you how to do it right now okay we're back at amateur contact log and what we're going to do is upload some records to logbook of the world and qrz now as you can see those records are still highlighted uh, that i did before i'll do it again here so i'm going to highlight the first one that i want to upload and then the last one there's a few ways but you just choose e-logs i'm going to go to logbook of the world and then it opens up another window right here and I'm just going to choose selected from main contacts. I don't choose, I don't have to use this one because I've, I've got a couple of uh, bad records in there that I can't seem to weed out. So let's hit that button. It, it's already been configured. I'm not going to go through how to configure this thing to use Logbook of the World, but just wanted to give you a quick look. I'm done. So I've already uploaded that. It's ready to go. Um, the next thing I'll do um, in just a little bit. I'm going to wait for the Logbook of the World system to get those lined up. But I'm going to pull some data back down so that I can tell which records have been updated. I'm not going to do that right now. So let's go back to um, our website here. When I last left you, this is where we we're at. Let's go to QRZ. And we're going to go over there. I'm already logged in, and I have a logbook out there. So I'm going to choose my call sign my logbook. I'm going to zoom in again just so uh, you guys maybe hopefully can read some of this. In the logbook there's uh, right here you'll see settings and refresh over the right hand side so I'm going to choose settings and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and you'll see ADIF import export. So I'm going to import and if you remember I'd already ex uh, done an export so I'm just going to use the exact same file that I did from the, the first export. Here it is, here's the ADI file on my uh, on my PC uh, with the name I gave it so I'm just going to double click on that guy and I'm going to say import. Alright so it, it was uploaded let's go out I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to hit this refresh button and we should see those records and we do. So there are my new records You'll notice they don't have a color on them yet, and the reason why they don't have a color yet is they haven't been downloaded from Logbook of the World. It's kind of a match. So I'm going to choose the button, Logbook of the World. I'm now going to enter in my super secret password. I've entered in my password, and you can see that it's it initiated a retrieve. I got a green down here. It's all done. So now I'm going to go ahead and refresh. If it 
it's green, that means they, oh, they haven't been uploaded. Our, our logbook of the world has not processed those yet. So no big one. I'll do that uh, later uh, this evening, and these will all get updated. It just helps me remember which ones got updated and which ones haven't. Um, the nice thing about putting them in here is you can see, for instance, uh, November 1, Sierra Mike Bravo um, uploaded his records, and therefore we have kind of a, a, we have a confirmed uh, QSO. Um, Kilo 7 Mike Kilo did the same thing, but his is out in Logbook of the World. So the ones with a circle around them came from Logbook of the World, and the ones with just a star came directly from QRZ. So it's just kind of another cool way to see uh, your data. Um, in some ways, it backs it up for you because it's all here and it's on my PC. Um, there might be some other stats and things that I can get out of QRZ that I can't get out of my logging program. Um, so anyway, there you go. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to leave you with, uh, with that and uh, wish you 73 and uh, ask that you get out there and chase some of us soda guys. If you don't know how to chase or what the heck I'm even talking about, I've done a series called Soda 360 out on my YouTube channel. And you'll see that series out there. And there's one specifically around chasing. It explains what it is and exactly how to do it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it's it's uh, it's just yet one more thing to do with ham radio. 73 guys.